Week two is one of my favorite weeks in fantasy football because sometimes it's hard to know if what happened in week one was real or fake. But usually after week two, we have a good idea of who we can rely on and who will likely need to ride the bench. Just look at running back. It is one of those positions that provides so much variance. Think back to last year's week one. The RB4 was Tyler Algier. The RB8 was Roshan Johnson. The RB9 was Kyron Williams. And the RB12, Keegan, was Joshua Kelly. At the time, only one of those guys would go on to be a true difference maker for fantasy football. So on today's episode of the Regress to the Bean podcast, we're going to help rank the top 47 running backs for week two of the NFL season. We're going to help you stick to your guns, start your studs, and make sure that you can avoid, if you're 0-1, going 0-2. And if you're 1-0, get to 2-0. It's a sweet feeling. I'm your host, Sean Moran, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, my good friends, and my fellow knowers of all, Keegan Thompson and Aiden Holler. Keegan, last time we recorded, vibes were a little down. You seem a little chipper. Um, You got to watch the Dolphins, because we're recording this after Thursday Night Football. You got to watch the Dolphins, one of the teams you hate watch lose. But it was also to a team you also like to hate watch the the Bills. How do, how do you feel yeah. watching two of like your 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 enemies go at it? How do you feel coming out of that? Just the worst run out possible for somebody who doesn't want to see either of them succeed in the AFC East. And also, I invested pretty heavily in the Miami Dolphins offense this year. And rough. I hope two is okay. I really do. But that's going to be a pretty tough go for those wide receivers if two it misses a couple weeks. So that was a bummer. But a chan. What a king, huh? What a guy he is. Who They're gonna get it? him killed. They're gonna get him killed. That was that got unnecessary at the end there. I, I saw someone tweet out, um, watching A Chan is both uh, exhilarating and terrifying, uh, that he's gonna get hurt. And I'm like, that's pretty much every single touch. Pretty much every touch. When they run in between the tackles, I my heart skips a beat and then he just gets up, kinda, you know, he's all short, and then just breaks off a fifty yard run on the next play. It's um I, I honestly think he could clear a thousand receiving yards and a thousand rushing yards if he plays all seventeen games. Like he's on pace for that through two weeks. He's currently tonight. averaging twenty five yeah. PPR points a game after two weeks. Who would ever <laughs> called it, guys? Who who would have called it? Um, I don't know. Definitely not us. Uh, Aiden, how are we doing today, man? I'm good. Um, uh, it it felt like good to get in the swing of just like awful Thursday night games. Um, it's just like. Thursday night's a pretty weekly, like awful product. So like it felt nice to get like a blowout and like get in that swing after a pretty good one to start the year. So um yeah, two up two up man, get well soon. Um if Rough. you've got Miami bags, you're in trouble. It's like A chan will be fine. A chan's gonna be fine. But man, if if you're a Tyreek or or Waddle owner, you are you're in danger. You're in danger for the immediate future. Yeah, hey, we'll don't have worry. To if you're up. excited if you're excited about bad Thursday night football games being back, just wait. You get Patriots and Jets next Thursday. Another AFC East battle. You'll just roll them, though. But, like, it's going to suck. Yeah, like, it's not going to be fun. Will we? They're a good defense. But, They're a good defense. Uh, I think the, the Patriots are going to muck it up. We'll see. We'll see how they like do. I, I think the Jets, will Jets win. or something. The Jets will win. Like, 13 the Jets will win. or something. They, they definitely it's should. Be stinky, um, that was all I was trying to say. <laughs> so, today's episode is pretty straightforward. I've gone ahead and I've raked the week two running backs and I've broken them into seven tiers. I'm going to go tier by tier, highlight some of the guys that I have the biggest discrepancies against fantasy pros, expert consensus rankings. So guys that I'm high on, guys that I'm low on. Um, as I go through each tier, Keegan and Aiden, they're going to share their thoughts on guys that they're also higher and lower on. They might even say like a love, hate, a start sit. Who, who would ever come up with a novel idea like that for uh, fantasy football content here? Um, but before we dive in, one quick thing. If you just discovered our channel because YouTube suggested it or you've watched a couple of our videos and you haven't decided to tip your dip your toes all the way in um, and you like what we're putting out there, uh, Keegan's got a message to you on what you should do. Keegan, what, what should the uh, new audience viewer do if they discovered us? We always say, just give us a shot. Take a listen. See how you feel. Let Sean talk to you about his rankings. Hear Aiden's infectious laugh. Call me a non-ball knower, whatever it is that you want to do, no, but sit do around, that, give us a 10, 15 minutes of watch time and make a decision for yourself. And if you enjoy it, like it, if you really enjoy it, subscribe. If you want to talk to us, drop a comment, come join the meme team though. We're a good hang and we're here to help you this year. That's what we're here for. 
the best in the business. Aiden did it on the last episode. Aiden's going to do it on the next episode. It's it's going to be like uh, the scene in the Dark Knight where they fight with the pool sticks. That's what it's going to be on who's going to be asking for the subs moving forward here. It's going to be We're a fight to the death. pandering, pandering, pandering. That's how we do it, baby. That's, okay. That's what we do it. Pander to the main. Right. Let's do it. Week two running back rankings. I'm going to share a spreadsheet, and I swear I have seen the light of day this week. Um, this is my rankings. These are my tiers. I'm going to drop these in the notes below. Uh, you can reference these in this Google sheet. We don't have a website yet, so we're just going old school here. Uh, <laughs> we're raw dog in the spreadsheets, uh, but feel free to reference this spreadsheet if you want these rankings. You're, you're Chris uh, Rod Dog Godwin. <laughs> Rod God is that's that adjusts the ranks. We just learned today that Chris Godwin's actual real first name is Rod, so he's literally the Rod God. Um, there's a lot you can do with that. There's a lot you can do with that. I don't know if that's safe for YouTube's uh, advertising policies, but there's a lot you can do with Rod God. We'll get into right, it on for, the wide receiver episode. Yes. We'll follow this on a running back episode. More okay, on the so rod guy coming soon. We're going to start things here. And I, again, if you're referencing these rankings at home, I've got it pretty clearly breaking out here. So this is ECR, which is the expert consensus rankings over at Fantasy Pros here in column E, column A. These are my ranks where I've got the players. I've got fantasy points per game, expected fantasy points per game. And then I have efficiency metric, which is essentially just fantasy points minus expected fantasy points. It just gives you an idea of how efficient they were with their opportunities. And then I've got the fantasy points allowed based off of receiving or rushing in this case um, from the defenses. So I'm going to start things off here with running back one through six. That's my first tier. These are the guys that I think are just going to have an unbelievable workload in week two. I've got Saquon Barkley at RB1, B. John Robinson at RB2, Joe Mixon at RB3, Brees Hall at RB4, Jonathan Taylor at RB5, and Kyron Williams at RB6. I'd say my biggest call out here, I've got two of them. I guess that's not biggest. My two biggest call outs here. Uh, I've got Saquon all the way up at running back one. I've seen enough. My capitulation's in. Um, with no CMC, I think this guy's just going to absolutely smash. Who would have thought, you know, Saquon with a real offense would do well? Uh, definitely not me. Okay. And the <laughs> third running back here, and someone that I've got way up um, based off expert consensus rankings, he's the running back eight. I have him at running back three. That's Joe Mixon. He he had by far and away the best usage of any running back. He had a 24.3 expected fantasy points usage, and he actually was efficient. You don't usually think of Joe Mixon as efficient, and he finished with 26.8 fantasy points. I mean, the guy just looked amazing. They, they have a zone run scheme. He looks fully capable of running in that scheme. Um, the Colts um, defensive coordinator, Gus Bradley, came out and said, we just had light block boxes because we're scared to death of these receivers. And I just think that's going to happen all season. They're just like, okay, Joe Mixon, you can beat us. We're just not going to let the stars beat us. So I'm super high on Mixon. I'll take a pause here in this tier. Keegan, looking at these guys, anyone speaking your language. So great to see the Saquon capitulation from Sean so early in the told season. You'd be he swift. told Aiden and I, if it, if it happened, he would switch real quick. But yeah, I think without Man, CMC, worked. Saquon is like the best in offensive environment and maybe the best running back talent. And so I think being ranked top one and, or top three and you have met one is totally fine with me. The Bijan truthers, like I think they got everything that they wanted to see. Like the usage is incredible. We just need to hit them home on a score. Um, the Mixon ranking. I don't know where I'm at with Mixon, like maybe closer to five or six, seven territory, but how do you not love that? I think that's a good point. Like, you're not going to stack the box because you'll get killed by Nico Tank and Diggs, and you kind of just got to let Mixon run. He's a really good fit with that. But no, I think this top six is is definitely the top six backs going into the week. It's let's hope Brees hits home a little bit better, huh? We need a home run out of Brees this week. Rough matchup, but his usage was awesome. So I, I am I'm happy with how Brees did in Week One. This was a blowout loss. Give me my 18 points. You love to see that, Aiden. I put Kieran slash Kyron, uh, the artist formerly known as Kyron, um, in here. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but any thoughts on this tier before we jump to tier two? Yeah, I think he's fine at six. Um, these top six in general, like the usage is just ridiculous for all of them. I was like trying to like mentally figure out how I could get Joe Mixon down from three. It's like <laughs> Brees has a really tough matchup. You know, JT, like Green Bay is, you know, an okay run defense. Kyron is fine there. Um, Joe Mixon is just like, he's in the same role again. Like we, like we called it. He's, he's just going to fall into every single touchdown inside of the five. He looked um, good, he's going to be on the field. And like, he, dude, he averaged over five yards a carry. It's like, man, I don't know. Like bears have a pretty good run defense, but like, does it matter when you're seeing every single running back touch? Like probably not. Like 
CJ Stroud's going to get you those money touches all game. So it's, you know, this is a great tier. Um, you know, you can't, I think like these six are pretty firmly like, you know, the bell cows, like, you know, these guys are on the field yeah. all game. Be crazy if you had a fantasy team that had uh, Kyron, JT, and Bijan. That'd be nuts if you had a single roster. Do you have one? All three. I do. Yeah. You have the one that we're in together. Yeah. I have all three. Which of those one? Guys. Del Mar. Del Mar. Oh, that's fucked. Yeah, it's a 10 team suit. It's a 10 team league super team kept Kyron, but none of you guys care. Okay. I, moving on. I to am the- excited. <laughs> Before we go to this tier, I'm pretty excited yeah. for Jonathan Taylor. I, I think it's a good, good matchup. matchup and. Yeah, there's just not another running back on that team that's going to get touches. So I think this should be a good John and Taylor week. No. Yeah, yeah, my notes. Uh, yeah, it's a good call out. My notes on JT will play every single snap against a bad run defense. See you at the cashier. Uh, that, that's yeah. what I have with uh, John and that, Taylor. That also, just adding one more thing on there, like that game script could get out of hand pretty quickly um, without Jordan Love. Like they, like they could be up like 14 by half um, against Malik Willis. So I think like, we could see a pretty disgusting amount of Jonathan Taylor just like absolutely just like shoving it down their throats. So um, that's another great yeah. call there. And he was fine. Houston has a really good run defense. We'll get into that yeah. later. So he, he was fine yeah. uh, in week one, all, all things considered. Yeah. yeah. Next tier, guys, here I've got at RB7, Jameer Gibbs, RB8, Devin Achan. I promise I wrote this before this happened. Okay. Um, if, but I, I mean, at, if you didn't write it before it happened, you could have had him at one. So. Yeah, yeah, I had him. I had him at eight. I, I thought he was going to play. Um, I was tapped into Cameron Wolf. Shout out Cameron Wolf, one of the best beat writers in the game. Uh, RB9, Alvin Kamara. RB10, Derek Henry. RB11, Josh Jacobs. And RB12, James Cook, who played. I was down one on James Cook. Uh, Jimbo. See how that, what, what do I know? Uh, Jimbo Cook with three touchdowns, things you love to see. I, I guess callouts in this tier in particular. Um, I'm super high on Josh Jacobs. I know Malik Willis, the concerns are, are bad. Um, and, but this indie rush defense just got gashed by Joe Mixon. Yeah, uh, Jacobs looked great in the opener. Um, I, I don't know the status quite yet. We're recording this again Thursday night. So Marshawn Lloyd's had back-to-back LPs. Maybe Lloyd gets out there. But he's got a pretty sweet rest advantage playing on Friday of last week. So he's basically had nine days off. Um, and I believe this is their home opener. So are they playing? Yeah, they're playing at home, right? Yeah, they got to. In which game? Green Bay, Indianapolis. I uh, should it should be. They both yeah. just played like opposite. Internationally. Yeah, 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 I have to guess that it's going to be Jacob's home opener with the, the Packers. So I'm, I'm in on Jacob's this week. Outside of that, um, call out Derek Henry. R- rough matchup in week one. I expect them to be winning handily against the Raiders this week. Which J- J- J.K. Him. Dobbins That's just went crazy. Him. So De- be patient, Derek Henry owners. He scored a touchdown, but I wouldn't be shocked if he was like a top five running back this week. He'll do but... it every week. He'll do it every week. I forgot yeah. to start the parlay. I might need to start the parlay this week. You're uh, there, though. You're already one for ladder. The yeah. Derek Henry ladder parlay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're, we're on uh, leg two. All right, Aiden, I'll take a pause here. Anyone here speaking your language in tier two? Yeah. Not really speaking my language. It's just like so annoying that we're here again with Alvin Kamara. Um, like <laughs> the PPR checkdowns, like it's it's two years in a row that I've done Good. this where I'm just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But it's just like Derek Carr is so addicted. Um, and like, don't get me wrong, like the offense was significantly better. Like in pretty much every metric, like Kubiak was, you know, like top offensive play caller, like top three play caller in week one. Um, but this still included what Kamara caught. What was it? Six, seven passes off the top of my head. It was like, Still, just like it's, it's right there too. in front of Derek, and and he just he he can't quit. Yeah, he even looked pretty good as a rusher. So it's like, yeah, I did. It just sucks that he's an RB one again. I I didn't draft any of it because I was just like disgusted. Um, yeah, again, and if their but, offense yeah, is going to move is. as well as it did last week, like moving forward through the season, that also just means more scoring opportunities for Alvin Kamara because they I don't know. really have so somebody they could push him at the goal line. Like Jamal Williams is there, but like he's not the early game plan. He got a lot of run towards the end when it was a blowout. But, if they're going to be in a position to score more, like that's pretty bullish for Alvin Kamara. And the other one is Josh Jacobs. It's tricky to rank him so high because you do know or assume that Malik Willis is playing, but Josh Jacobs is such an interesting running back. He's kind of like how Derrick Henry was most of his career. Like by touch 10, you just keep feeding him because he's going to yeah. heat up. I mean, they're going to rely on the run game now. quite a bit. Yeah, he just gets stronger and stronger. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he had RB 15 usage last week. You love to see that. So I, I feel really good. And then Kamara's usage, you called it, is insane. 19 expected fantasy points. And you don't expect the Kamara age 29 dunk on efficiency finishing 2.7 points better. So that, that's a bullish indicator for, for Kamara. I did not draft yeah. much of him, but he I looks like a pretty good pick so far. Like zero, zero. 
Moving on to a tier of guys that I think we did draft a decent amount of, tier three. I've got running back 13, Isaiah Pacheco. Running back 14, K9, Kenneth Walker. 15, James Conner. 16, Anthony, Tony Pollard. 17, Jordan Mason. And uh, <laughs> running back 18, Rashad White. A uh, big decliner in this tier for me is Isaiah Pacheco. Um, he had RB15 usage in week one. Uh, he has a good matchup against the Bengals. Uh, that defense did get gashed by Mondre Stevenson. Um, however, this is like a vibes thing, but the Bengals are already talking shit about Xavier Worthy. They're running their mouths. I kind of feel like they're going to come out there and try and throw the ball around the yard. So I feel I think like they're it gonna never the ends well when a DB starts talking trash about somebody. Like it's very rare that a DB comes out pre-game, talks trash about somebody. Like it just and doesn't backs end it well. up. And backs Andy Reid is going to scheme up the gnarliest play for Xavier Worthy. He's going to score another touchdown. Uh, but that's a funny vibe pick there, Sean. It's just like, I think they might air it out. I think they might go toe-to-toe in the air with the Bengals. Um, also, I wasn't like, I drafted a bunch of Pacheco, and I was pretty high on this year. I wasn't overly excited about the usage he was getting. I thought it was like super valuable, but it was like, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, to be honest. It was fine. It, like He had like 70% of the snaps. Yeah. Usage was good. was good. RB15 usage, like we, we want more. Um, as someone who drafted him at the 2-3 turn, uh, probably at his peak value before the P. Ryan signing, but he's gonna he's a fringe RB1. I'm like, I'm not down, I'm, but he, like it feels a little high to have him. At, I think they have, like, ECR has him at like six because they just watched Mondre just go off. So I get it. Could be wrong here based off that matchup. And then I, I want to highlight Tony Pollard too. I have him, I have him up considerably up the rankings. He's one of my highest risers. I've got him 10 spots ahead of expert consensus rankings. Like the usage was good, but the efficiency was back. Mr. Anthony Pollard is shot out of a cannon. So we'll see if they get Ty J more involved, but until we see it, this is Tony P's backfield. That's the assumption I'm making. So if, you know, Ty J comes out and it's a Ty J game, it is what it is, but the Jets just got humiliated by the 49ers in the run game and they're traveling to Tennessee off a short week. It just feels like a really good spot for Tony Pollard. So I'll pause here. This tier has got shot a, it's got Jordan Mason. It's got canine who hasn't practiced this week. Is anyone in this tier speaking your guys' language? I, I, I'm kind of assuming that CMC is not going to play again. If that's the case, like I don't Jordan Mason probably play. belongs to Tiro. Um, like if we, like if we're being completely honest, um, he looked incredible. He looked absolutely incredible. That line was it was alleys, man. That was you could have fit three or four people um, through some of those holes on Monday night. So um, no, I think Jordan made like it's fair to put him here. You know, like like we can't assume he's not going to play. Kyle just, Kyle Shannon just keeps lying to us, so um, we don't really know what's going to happen, but. Yeah, Jordan Mason is like Jordan Mason's like an RB one play. Um, you know, it's he's the usage was was silly. Like we talked about it on our overreactions earlier this week. If Jordan Mason's taking you know the bulk of that backfield, like why can't he be an RB one on a week to week basis? You know that that offense is going to score. My only fear with Mason this week is Minnesota looked damn good against the run in Week One. Yeah. Now they were playing an anemic Giants defense, but they're good at stopping the run. The 49ers have not won in Minnesota in 28 years. Like last year they went in what? The Super Bowl team and they got smacked. So like short week, I'm just, I'm a little concerned about the game script here. So like, I, I, this is right. just me being a Niner fan kind of like, I don't know. So like that, that's why I have Mason low, but if it's a positive game script, Mason's going to be a top 12 play. If CMC yeah. doesn't play. Yeah. I'm not taking anything seriously against that Giants team. Um, let's be real. I think we can put some college teams against them and have a good fight. Definitely worried about Kenneth Walker. I hope he's healthy because I feel like he should be firmly in this tier. Even a yeah. tier above, he looked really good last week. If he's injured, that's a bummer. The nice. Tony Pollard thing is tricky, like going back and watching some of that game. Like the Jets were just not threatening to stop the run at all. Like none of their defensive formations they lined up in indicated that they wanted to stop the run. That's been a problem with the solid defense. Even last year when we were top defensive unit, like we were still getting gashed weekly by – especially receiving backs too. So it makes me nervous about Pollard. It could be a pretty underrated matchup for Pollard this week. I will call this out. Rashad White's usage was top 12 again. You know, everyone's claiming, everyone's throwing dirt on Sade's grave because of Bucky. And rightfully so. Yeah, Bucky didn't get run until it was, you know, way late in the game. He had like one or two early runs that were good, but it was was the Sade show for most of that game. So he should firmly be like top 18 play until we see otherwise top 15 what a, maybe what a bizarre player literally two yards per rush and um 
10, 15 like 10 yards, yards per reception. It, it's it's so just, he's weird. so electric in space. I don't, I really, it's, it's so bizarre to watch Sade cook. Um, moving on to tier four here. This one's a, a bigger tier. It's basically RB twos. Um, I've got Najee Harris at running back 19, Mondre Stevenson at 20, David Montgomery, 21, Jerome Ford, 22, Brian Robinson, 23, Aaron Jones, 24, Zach Moss, 25, JK Dobbins, 26 and Travis Etienne. So some of my biggest decliners are here in this in this tier. So I'll start there. I'm, I'm lower on J.K. Dobbins this week. Look, guys, it was an amazing story. He he led our waiver wire show with likely. So Aiden and I are in. It's like, this is a juicy matchup too against the Panthers, who just got gashed by the ghost of Alvin Kamara. So like, but I want to just take a deep breath here. He he had an excellent day against the Raiders. He averaged 10 yards per carry, but he had the RB 32 usage. So like he, yeah, he was still yeah like. We got to see more of him. He's still 12 months out from the Achilles tear. Like, I, I'm just, I'm a little, like, again, I think Dobbins is a good play this week. Uh, I just, I see people want to put him in that top 15 range, and I'm a little reticent to do that after just one week. I'm not selling. Yeah, anybody, I see a lot of selling Galaxy Brainers, but that's not me. What were you saying, Keegan? I was going to say, anybody watching this video right now, and, like, you're looking at rankings, like, just because Dobbins, like, we, Sean has Dobbins lower than ECR, like, doesn't mean he's not a play. Like, we're still in the territory where, Guys, we're talking about, you're playing regardless. We're just saying, like, let's maybe wait a little bit before we start putting him in, you know, top 20. I see the ECR has him in 19. It's like the usage was okay, but he just hit home on some runs and he broke free against a pretty porous <laughs> Raiders run defense. He's got a good match. There were some again. big holes. Hey, there were some big yeah. holes. Hey, maybe we talk about him again. He's a little bit higher next week, but like, we're still in the firm, like, play your guys territory. And I think the other person here that's two, two notes. The Ramondre Stevenson Renaissance, like I don't, Maybe. I didn't predict that at all. Yes, the, the usage Did was fantastic. The, the, the Ramondre Sons. Stevenson, the Mondre Sons. Yeah. yeah, the Sons, baby. What the hell was that? He looked incredible. He doesn't have I mean, a high ankle sprain anymore. Remember, he got that high ankle sprain last yeah. year, and it was just over. I almost said Jover, and that YouTube commenter was going to scream at me, but it was just don't over. Don't you for him dare! The don't the only issue thing. is like the Bengals just came out so flat. Right. Like they, they just had no type of game plan for the Patriots and they kind of punched them in the mouth. So I think they underestimated him. So, like, can New England do that again against Seattle? I don't think Seattle's run defense is great, but it's also not the worst. So that's very interesting. And the other one is good. ETN. I'm low on what, ETN. What? Yeah. That's really low. Yeah. I like Najee here. Um, they, they just got embarrassed on the ground last week. Um, and Najee's good. Like, whether you like it or not, it's like, it's Denver. never that pretty yeah. with Najee, but like he's going to rush for 100 yards and get in the end zone this week. Like he's just, he's going to do it. Like K9 just absolutely dominated them last week. You what? know, Sharp had his fair share of eating too. Like I'm pretty excited for that matchup this week. It's Why couldn't Arthur give Bijan the Najee Harris usage? Because he's an idiot, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but he kind of did give Najee the usage. Uh, that game was weird. I'd honestly, that might be he the He had one of the 20 touches. Teams. I mean, he still had RB, like what? His usage was still like middling. So I th honestly it was like RB19 usage. So that's why I've got him here. And I'm upgrading him on this matchup against Denver. Like I think they get busy, as Keegan would say. Um, <laughs> and then I do I do want to say the Travis Etienne point. And I know this sounds crazy to have Travis Etienne as an as a like basically low end, low end RB2. RB2. Yeah. Um okay. Cleveland's good against the run. Right? The they they look good. They look good against the run. He had RB21 usage in week one, but he had that awful fumble at the end of the game. That cost him that game. He fumbled and cost him the game. And then Tank Bigsby out-touched him. And then I'm a, I'm a Tank Bigsby hater. I, we play Dynasty. I traded him straight up for Traylon Burks. Okay, so that's how my th that's my that's my opinion on Tank Bigsby. And Tank Bigsby looked better. Like, I don't know what that was, man. And like I'm an ETN guy. I've firmly been an ETN guy for years now, but. I'm getting weird vibes. Now, I, I'm more than that willing to have the egg on my weird, face. Though. That offense was I'm, weird week one. I'm willing to be wrong. I'm willing to be wrong yeah. on this, but like, I'd rather play Jerome Ford than Travis Etienne. Jerome Ford had the RB3 oh. usage in week one. He had the RB3 yeah. usage. He had 19 fantasy points. He's playing with Noodle Arm Watson. The only thing you can do is do dump offs right now. I, like, it's I just don't think right into Ford's that, game. But. I, I will say, like, I'll just make my stance here. Like, I'm pretty okay with most of this territory, but Monty, you know, he should probably lead this category, and ATM should be right behind him. 
Like I know it was one bad week for ETN, but this is Travis ETN we're talking about. Like one of the highest uses of any running back last year. Obviously, Tank is not the same last year. And then David Montgomery, like, this is the best offensive line in football. And he he handled that game at the end. Like those that overtime players like was, that don't just yeah, get ridiculous. Yeah, he, he still got players like that by Gibbs though. Next out of game plans. Well, of but course, but he still like, got like I think we just have to be. We can't double count. Like Monty is here. I, I have actually Monty three spots ahead of expert consensus. I, I'm right? just saying. I think just for me when I'm looking at these names, like I, I think Monty and Etienne will lead the category. I'm not saying moving up a tier. No. Like that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like I mean, Najee leading this one. That's I, that's who I, I would do pick too. This. I do too. Oof, All right, this next one. It's a rough tier, guys. I don't. I. I, I probably could have been three tiers. I. I don't know. Um. I, I've got at RB twenty eight <laughs> Devin Singletary, RB twenty nine DeAndre Swift, RB thirty Rico Dowdle, RB thirty one Zeke Elliott, thirty two Ty J Spears, thirty three Javante Williams, thirty four Jaleel McLaughlin, thirty five Zamir White, thirty six Alexander Madison, um, and thirty seven. Yuck. Austin Eckler. So two big risers here. I have Alexander Madison up nine spots ahead of expert consensus rankings because he's the Raiders starting running back. Uh, LOL. Um, and <laughs> I've got Rico Dowdle here up 11 spots from ECR. No, it's not because I just traded for him in dynasty with Keegan. This is um, a bit of a shot call here. Th- this is me shooting my shot here. New Orleans, New Orleans looked damn good last week. Zeke was clearly ahead of Dowdle, uh, but Zeke looked fine. Uh, he looked spry for Zeke. Uh, it's like um, driving with your grandparent. It's like, wow, they actually did a good job this time driving. But like, you know, keep driving with them. You're going to see plenty of things you don't like. Um, Everything I just think else Dottle... has been so thoroughly thought out, Sean. And like, this is like a full blown like heat check ranking. Yeah, on Rico just shoot Dowdle my shot here. on on Dowdle. <laughs> I feel I just think Dowdle looked good, and I think they'll I think they're going to trust Zeke because Zeke's amazing in pass protection. But I just I just feel like. I feel like Dowdle's going to have a good game. I just, I don't know. I could be wrong here. I could be starting our Sunday night preview show just with egg all over my face and milk was a bad choice with Dowdle, but I like Dowdle here. I think it's a good spot for him. Um, what's going on with this tier though? Anyone speaking to you guys' language? Just give me Madison. Um, this tier sucks. Um, you give you Madison? They're going to be oh, losing all game and he's clearly right. the pass catcher. Um, like, I don't feel very good about Swift after last week. I don't want anything to do with the Giants running backs. Pretty good off Dowdle or Elliott. I think actually Tajay is a good call out, too. Um, I think like I said, they get destroyed that... by pass catching backs. Like, it, yeah. it's, a, it's an actual problem for the Jets defense. It was and last I... year. It's the same scheme. It's going to be a problem this year. And I think in a bad game script, like Tajay is probably on the field over Pollard. Um, I think be. Tony's better in a closer game or a game they're winning, whereas I think. You know, if you're just passing it, screens and stuff, like Tajay could have himself a nice little game. So if I had to pick anyone from this tier, it'd, it'd be Tajay or Madison, which is it's crazy that I'm I'm attaching my name to Alexander Madison after the things I said about him last season, which were nice. It wasn't mean, but they weren't very supportive. You you literally were like, this guy cannot play football, and then he couldn't. So that was that was your coming out party for, for season. He long might fantasy be able to play an okay. I don't know. He looks good in number twenty two. I I'll give him that. He he fooled me. It's like <laughs> flus with a beard. He fooled me there too. Um, Keegan, anyone speaking your language in this tier? No, I like the Taj call. Like I said, the pass catching backs typically uh, get the best of the New York Jets. Uh, I'm not ready to discount Swift yet. Like first game with a rookie running back. You know, Swift has looked pretty good in preseason. Obviously, if you watch Hard Knocks, like. Swift looks pretty spry. I think Aiden can agree with me. Like, I think his speed is still there. Houston could be a good get right matchup for Caleb and the offense as a whole. I'm not saying that their defense is bad by any means, but I expect them to be more competitive. And with that, Swift's opportunities will increase. Like, they just didn't have an opportunity to establish the run with yeah. the way Caleb was playing. Like, yeah, exactly. so I think Swift is probably going to be the easy riser for me out of this category. And I don't have much to say on the Denver running backs, but my Javante Williams stream is fine. Just piggybacking well, your uh, your bears. Estimate there, like... IR. So sorry, Aiden, yeah. Estimate IR is good for Javante. What were you saying, Aiden? Yeah, I was saying like the lack of Khalil is also encouraging for Swift owners. Um, he had, like ten percent snap share. Like it was Travis Homer was like the clear cut running back too. It was like what what the hell is going on? But Shane Waldron is just weird. He likes his Seattle guys. 
it's a that's probably one of the biggest red flags is when you just play guys from the previous team you had. Yeah, what if we just played Gerald Everett over Cole Komet? Like, old yeah, days. what if, yeah, what if we just didn't give a talented running back snaps because that's I, tr- you know, Travis Homer, I trust him. Um, that's fun. You, you're let's you're not this, Sean McVay, uh, buddy. Let's do these bottom tiers together, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, this should be one tier six. I've got Jeff Wilson. <laughs> good, good luck with that. Uh, Ty Chandler. Bucky Irving, Jalen Warren, Gus Edwards. If I'm looking at this tier, pretty good usage for Tyler Chan- Ty Chandler. Um, 9.2 expected fantasy points, 7.2. They got him clearly involved. He had 11 touches. Yeah, do not drop Ty Chandler if you have him on your bench because Aaron Jones is perpetually injured. And then the next tier I've got here is 43 Chase Brown, 44 Chuba, 45 Zach Charbonnet, 46 Justice Hill, and 47 the aforementioned Tank Bigsby. Uh, Zach Charbonnet is firmly in this tier, the Najee tier. If uh, oh, K9 yeah. doesn't play, if K9 oh, doesn't play, yeah. bump uh, Charbonnet because K9 oh, has gotten two tiers. DNPs. I, you're, you're bumping Zach Charbonnet into um, this Probably Brian like Robinson, tier. Jerome yeah. Ford, yeah tier. Um, that, that's where that's where I've got him. What do you guys think about this tier? Um, obviously, I was so right about Chase Brown all summer. Anywhere. I just want to say it. I was right about Chase Brown. I was kind of there with you, but it's too early. Um, the the other people in this, if you're a zero RB bro like me, like you couldn't imagine a worse start to the season with Jalen Warren. Like the CPAD touches are insufferable, and they're a nightmare Pittsburgh for him. offense. Like it, it's a nightmare. Uh, this is a good matchup for the Steelers running backs, though. So I would like to see some more Jalen Warren usage, but troublesome. Um, he's the most the interesting. Though. He's coming off the hammy, though, so maybe they're just slowly bringing him back in. So that would be we'll good. Caveat I, that. I would we'll like caveat that. that. I'm not giving up hope yet. The most interesting person in this, these two tiers to me, though, is Justice Bucky. Hill. Like, oh, I, if Bucky's interesting for watching, you know, like how that develops with the shot wide as it gets better. But Justice Hill, like known commodity in Baltimore, like I'm not saying he's special, but if he is going to be a pass catching back, now, I don't think they're going to pass that much every game, but it's pretty clear that Derrick Henry's not going to get the same amount of touches he was in Tennessee. Like, I'd be watching Justice Hill as potential someone to like stash on your bench. I'm not saying like blow fab on him or anything, but the usage was really good. I know the game script was a little wonky, but you know, Derrick Henry might just get 15 touches a game, but if there's 10 left over for Justice Hill. I'm I'm pretty encouraged by that. RB twenty four usage in week one for Justice Hill, by the way. Yeah, that was interesting. So I'm excited for more Bucky. Um he's gonna get a bigger role this week. Like you can't not give him a bigger role. Um he was so much better than Rashad on the ground. Do you like, see what Todd Bowles said? He said, you know, some of those holes opened up for Bucky at the end of the game, but we got to get those holes opened up for Rashad. Yeah, it's so true. We looked at this on uh, the waiver wire episode, Aiden and I, but Bucky had like pretty much, he had 50 yards before contact. <laughs> it was like, how, but again, Rashad, Rashad had like, like zero, right? It was like zero. Rashad it was like kind of dances. I, I think the issue with Rashad is vision because he's fast and he's big. But when he gets the ball, he kind of dances behind the line of scrimmage where Bucky just hits the hole. Hits it. He hits um, it. Where it, I just, I, Rashad White remains one of the weirdest players I've, <laughs> I've ever yeah. seen. Um, it makes, yeah, I'm excited to see how that split kind of shifts a little because they need them both. And it, it's a really good, it's a really great backfield, honestly. Um, but like he needs more carries, like just bottom line, he needs more carries. It'll be a tough matchup against Detroit this week for either of them. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that's spread out. And, one call out to is, is Gus Edwards that we're on um, drop watch for Gus because yeah, yeah, yeah. Gus yeah. looked now he did have a knee scope, I think this off season. So like he, he might be playing himself back into shape, but he's close to getting um, like his touch is taken by like Vidal. Um, you know, it's that's exact, only a matter drop, of time. Drop so, watch is firm right now. Oh, I didn't drop even watch see you wrote that, for Gus Edwards. That's awesome. Only a matter of that. time until Vidal yeah. gets run. <laughs> it, it, it looked really bad. Like it looked slow it, and watching JK, it was it was disorienting to watch was, the difference. It was between so the two. different. No, it was very different. All right, that's forty seven running backs. I can't believe we just did that. We did that in 30, 30 minutes, guys. That's um that's the stuff. If you have any start sit questions, or if you want to reference the rankings, they'll be in the notes in this episode. Drop them in the comments below. We're here to help. We do not want you to go into, and we want you to go two and zero if you've already won. Um, guys, before we jump, anything to say to the mean team? Um, best of luck this season it's don't overreact like me also it's week one maybe you're one and six across all your leagues like me who cares just go get them in week two i like this vibe yeah this is good 
this is good um yeah enjoy it man enjoy it um <laughs> <laughs> you never get know crazy, how long man. you get to do it for. You never, you yeah, never know man. until you have kids and have to hang it yeah. up. So enjoy it while you still can, boys. Yeah, like, one week like, you've yeah. drafted Puka Nakua at the turn, and the next week he's gone. You know, you just got to cherish yeah. the moment. Hey, you got Tyler Johnson at home. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, just um, smile because it happened, man. It, hey. you know, just smile because it happened. <laughs> Everyone's Colbying their Parkinson's these days. Okay, everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in. And again, running backs will be on this feed on Friday. Make sure to tune in. Till next time.